Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for the part two video of getting started with analytics on Android. This time we're going to be talking about user properties and user scope custom dimensions. What are they? What's the relationship between them? And how can you use them to better understand your users? I highly recommend watching part one of this series where we talked about logging events for analytics with Firebase. In that video, you should have learned a few things that will be really helpful for this one and going forward. Let's review. You can log events in the code. You can register event parameters and see the generated event reports in the Firebase console. And you should have also learned how to put a test device into debug mode, which is really helpful for trying to test whether or not you're successfully logging analytics data. That's a high level review of the last video, but something has changed in the Firebase console UI since that video was made. I'll review the changes since they relate to how you configure user properties. All of the concepts for logging analytics events are the same. You're gonna log them the same way in the code and we'll still have to register those event parameters as custom definitions in the console if we wanna view those reports. What has changed is how to navigate there. Let's take a look. Over in the console, let's navigate to events. We still see that our role event is being logged as expected. There's a side tab that says custom definitions and no surprise, that's where we're going to go to manage custom definitions. Let's go over how to register a custom dimension to track the doubles parameter, just as we did in the last video. We'll click create custom dimensions, enter the dimension name doubles, the description, whether or not the user role doubles, and select doubles from our list of parameters. That should all be pretty familiar. Lastly, we'll choose event under scope. Scope tells us to which data a custom metric or dimension will be applied. Dimensions and metrics can only have one defined scope and it can't be changed after they're created. In this case, we've chosen event for our scope. Event scoped properties get their values from event parameters that we logged in our code. In this case, the doubles parameter. Let's click save to create our doubles dimension. We can use the event scoped custom dimension we just created to report on as many events as we wish. For example, if I were to create a second set of dice in my dice rolling app with 12 sides, I could log a 12 sided roll event in my code with the doubles parameter. I could then use the doubles dimension I just defined to create a report of users rolling doubles on that 12 sided roll event without having to create another custom dimension. All right, one last thing to mention with this review. You may have noticed that the other option for scope is user, which is where custom definitions for user properties are configured and will be the topic of the rest of this video. So enough of that review, let's jump into some new content and talk about user properties. First and foremost, what are they? User properties are a way to track values for a user. Maybe a user's favorite animal or whether or not a user is on the premium paid plan of your app. Unlike our role event, which occurs over and over again whenever a user taps role in our app, most user properties aren't changed very often. They can be thought of as sticky event scoped properties. This is not to say that user properties can never change for a user. Your user may decide that dogs are their favorite animal instead of cats, or they may stop paying for the premium plan. No matter how you use them in your app, User properties can give a better understanding of your app's users. User properties are core tagging and collection concepts. They're how you gather data about your users. Now, how do user properties relate to user scope custom dimensions? User scope custom dimensions have to be registered explicitly in the console, and their values are supplied by user properties. They're used for generating reports and doing analysis. The relationship between user properties and user scope custom dimensions is the same relationship as event properties and event scope custom dimensions. 
All in all, user properties and their associated custom dimensions give better insight into who exactly is using your app. For example, do I have more dog or cat people in my app? You can also filter reports by user scope dimensions to see how different groups of users use your app. Are my free tier users spending more time playing my adventure game than my paid subscribers? There are user properties that are automatically collected by Google Analytics. For example, age, gender, country, or device model, plus many more. But instead of these automatically logged user properties, we're going to focus on user properties that are custom to your app and your business model. For example, take our dice rolling app. Users can tap roll to roll the dice. Now we want to know more about our users. Let's create a dialogue where our users can self-declare themselves as either novices or experts. We can log this information as a user property in the code. With this information, we can better understand our users, and we can start making critical business decisions about where to focus our development time or even our ad spending. Let's implement this. In part one of this series, we developed our app with a dice rolling function. We click roll, and we can see the results of those rolls. For this video, we want to get a better understanding of our users by tracking users' experience levels by setting a user property. In the code, in the dice view model class, we make a call to analytics to log the roll event every time we click the roll button. We're going to make a similar call, this time to set a user property. It'll look like this, Firebase Analytics dot set user property with the name experience level, and let's give it the value expert. There's a few things less than ideal about this implementation. First, we've already decided what experience level our user is, expert, without giving anyone a choice. Second, it doesn't really make sense to set the user property every time a user rolls since their experience level doesn't change with every role. Instead, let's ask the developer just once per app session. We use the dice view model class to control calls to analytics to log the role event. So let's use a user view model class to set the user property we want. We'll create a Kotlin class, call it user view model. And once that's created, we'll update it to inherit from view model. Let's define the function that sets our user property with analytics, update experience level, which takes in one parameter, a string representing the value that the user has chosen. Within that function, we'll want to call Firebase Analytics. So let's create an instance of that. Private val Firebase Analytics is equal to Firebase.Analytics. And as expected, we'll want to import that and import analytics as well. Then in our function, we can say Firebase Analytics dot set user property and pass the name we want. In this case, experience underscore at level and pass it the parameter, which is the string novice or expert, depending on which the user has chosen. Now we can call this function wherever it makes sense to update a user's experience level and pass a string variable representing what the user's experience level should be updated to. Let's prompt the user to choose their own experience level with a dialog. Over in the main activity, when the user opens the app, the onCreate method is called. I've written a function that shows a dialog. It already implements the UI elements. The user has two options to choose novice or to choose expert. Here's where it makes sense to set our user property. So let's call that function we defined. But first, we'll need to define an instance of our user view model class as a variable user model. Because it's a view model class like dice view model, its declaration will look similar. Then, when a user clicks novice, we can call our function update experience level and pass it the value the user has chosen, in this case, novice. Similarly, when a user clicks expert, we'll pass the parameter expert to that same function. We also want to update the UI to display what experience level the user has chosen. I've already written a function to do that, so we'll just call it when the user chooses novice and when the user chooses expert. Let's rerun our app. 
This is where your learnings from the previous video hopefully will come in handy. If you have your device enabled as a debug device like I do, you should expect these events to be logged in the debug view. Let's choose expert as our experience level and log a few events. Let's go over to debug view to take a look at what analytics we received. We can see that our experience level user property is being set to expert. The UI clearly differentiates between user properties and events, as you can see. When our experience level or user property is set, every event that occurs after will include this user property. Let's click into a few of these role events. On each, we can see the experience level is logged. We can even click on the screen view event and see that our user property is there as well. If I restart my app and choose novice as my experience level this time, we can see that the new experience level value is being set to novice. And now each event following that includes our user property. I'm confident now that my code is working and that my analytics events and user properties are logged in my code. Let's register a custom definition for our user property. To do that, we'll go over to custom definitions. This is where I can see the doubles event that I created earlier. Now I'm following a similar process, but for a user scope dimension. I'll click create custom dimensions and give this dimension the name experience level. Scope is user. Then we'll add a description whether the user identifies as an expert or novice. In user property, experience level to match the one we logged in our code. As we talked about earlier, scope defines to which data a custom metric or dimension will be applied. User scope custom dimensions are populated from user properties and will automatically be reported with every event registered, as we saw over in debug view. After clicking save, we can see our new user scoped custom dimension in our list. We can also look at our current quota for custom definitions. We have one user scope custom dimension. That's the experience level one we just defined. One event scope custom dimension. That's the doubles one we defined earlier in this video. And lastly, we have one event scoped custom metric. That's the sum metric we defined in the last video. To review, we have custom dimensions, which are discrete values, and custom metrics, which are numerical values. Then we have different scopes user scoped and event scoped, where user scoped are populated from user properties and are automatically reported with every event, and event scoped, which take their values from event parameters and can be reported on from as many events as we choose. As the quota information shows, there are limits to how many of each custom definition we can create, but this menu helps us keep track. And if we ever reach the limit, we can archive any existing definition we've created to make room for new ones. All right, we've added our custom definition for the user property, but we need to wait a few hours for the event report to generate and show up in the console. Finally, it's a few hours later, and we can start looking at the console to answer questions about our users. Let's go over to the event dashboard and see our user property in action. As you can see, we're still logging our role event. Let's click on the event to see more details. We can then go up to filters, user scope custom dimensions, select our experience level definition, and choose expert to filter only by roles by self-declared experts. Hmm, we had some role events in our app for experts, but not as many as I expected. It looks like we have a lot of experts using our app, but they don't roll the dice as much as I thought they would. Let's now go look at novices so we can compare. We'll remove our current filter on experts and instead add a filter for novice the same way we did before. For novices, we had lots of role events, way more than for experts. Plus, we have less novices using our app than experts. All this means that while we have more experts using our app, the novices are clicking roll way more than the expert dice rollers are. This makes me think that our novice users are much more engaged with our current app than our experts are. Thanks to user properties and user scope custom dimensions, I'm already beginning to see a potential audience that I could create. 
If I wanted to create an audience consisting of expert players, I could say send them targeted messages via Firebase cloud messaging to help engage that group of users. Using audiences is a way to identify specific groups of users so you, as the app developer, can develop a tailored user experience. Now that I have a better understanding of my users, I've decided to spend some development time adding advanced functionality to the app to help engage my expert user audience more. I think they'd really love to be able to roll that 12-sided die. I better start writing some code. Thanks for following along, everybody. Hopefully, you can get started setting user properties in your app, creating user scope custom dimensions, and thinking about how to break up your user base into segments to better understand your users. If you want more information, take a look at our lovely documentation. And last but not least, please subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel, and I'll catch you next time.